bit about um, one of the, hold on, we got a couple of people coming in, um, of one of our open RFPs that we have right now for our home investment partnerships program. So that's our Tarrant County Home Funds. It's about $3.5 million that we have right now, and that includes a lot of funding from previous years. And what we're really looking for with this funding um, is new construction of affordable and attainable housing, either single family or multifamily, um, acquisition and rehab to preserve affordable and attainable housing, conversion of an existing structure from another use to affordable rental housing, uh, demolition as it relates to these activities, any related soft costs, um, and of course, CHODO operating funds in concert with these activities if you're a qualifying CHODO. So this is one of those really cool funding sources that we have that really helps with that infill. So if you've got a development and you're looking for a few units, so it doesn't have to all be home units, but if you're looking for five or six, this is a perfect way to accomplish that so we can really spread affordable housing across the community. It also does work really well for that single family piece. Um, and I'll be happy to, as soon as I'm done um, visiting with all of you, I'll drop a link to this RFP in the chat. Um, and just a quick overview. So um, through this piece, we do have, um, uh, we're really trying to focus on where we're developing. So that location piece truly does matter. Um, we also want to make sure that you're thinking about the community and how it can complement that area. Um, also financial feasibility. So what does that funding stack look like? Is it going to be home funds? Are you using vouchers of any kind? Um, what other funding sources play a part? Do you have community support? Um, and so, and also looking at your experience as a developer over time. So this is one of those um, funding sources that we're really excited. It pairs very well um, with a low housing or low income housing tax credits, whether that's a 4% or a 9% deal. Um, and then also really works well um, if you're just trying to make sure that you're able to meet different um, area median incomes in the community. We also know that every community is different. And so you're going to be looking at different tools for different um, areas of your community that you're trying to serve. Um, and so uh, please know that we are absolutely open to talking about all the different funding sources and what works best um, in your community. We also work very closely with our Housing Finance Corporation, which Natalie's going to talk about here in a little bit. Um, and what's so wonderful about that group is they're very interested in expanding um, their role and looking at different deals in ways that perhaps we have not looked at before. Um, so that's just a quick overview of that program. I'll drop a link to the RFP in just a second, um, and then we'll pass it back to James. Oh, James, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. And so next up is Nat is Natalie Rose from Housing Finance Corporation. And uh, we had word yesterday that we need to let everyone know that the Housing Finance Corporation is open for business. And so Natalie, tell us a little bit about how they can use that. Well, um, good morning, everybody. First of all, um, I'm glad to see so many people are, are here today. The Housing Finance Corporation um, is in the past, you know, everything was um, there wasn't any special deals. So it was just kind of like if they were um, there, there were no tax credits, there were no uh, tax exemptions, things of that nature. That's all they were really looking at. But then, um, you know, recently with with the change in construction costs and and um, things that the developers are running into as far as um, funding, the corporation is looking at they want they're going to start looking at different types of deals so um, they want to work with the developers um they talk about you know different financing structures and things of that nature and claire kind of with hilltop is on the call as well claire and tim um so we'll be working really closely with them to try to um work out some of these deals now they'll just be kind of looking at them on a case-by-case -case basis at first and because they're kind of getting their feet wet um, doing these different financing structures. But um, my role with the corporation is coordinating with um, Hilltop, with uh, James and Maggie and the um, the board, which is made up of our commissioners um, and the county judge and scheduling meetings and getting the paperwork um, signed and processed and, and things of that nature. And then I'm responsible for um, other administrative duties that go along with that. But yes, the county, uh, the Housing Finance Corporation of Tarrant County is open for business and we'd love to see um, the, what you've got and talk about the deals that you have and um, try to try to move forward and, and work with you as best as we can and get some things going. 
Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Uh, Clara, Clara uh, Merritt is with uh, Hilltop Securities, and uh, they work with they work with the Housing Finance Corporation, and they um, they help us with the with the process. They talk with developers who are interested. And Clara, we we've, we've been getting a lot of uh, questions about PFCs, and so I hope you'll be able to cover a little bit of that. But good morning, Clara. Talk. You have the right, floor. Yeah. Thank you, James, and thank you everyone for having me. Can you all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. I'm on a laptop in a hotel room right now, so I want to make sure that there's not any background noise. Um, but thank you, Natalie, for that great overview. Um, I definitely think it's uh, Tarrant County HFC is in a unique position right now, as Natalie alluded to, that in previous years, they've only uh, really stepped into the role as um, a bond issuer. And if there were any, um, you know, a tax abatement to help fill the gap in financing um, and being the general partner to receive that property tax exemption, Tarrant County HFC hasn't really been involved in those um, discussions or wanting to be in that role. Um, now we're seeing, and I would say probably 10 years ago, I would say about one in every 10 deals, um, HFCs would be involved in the partnership to receive that property tax exemption. Um, and then nowadays uh, with the increase, as Natalie said, the increase in construction costs, um, interest rates, and just the, the limit on the rents and the revenues that a project can receive, that gap in financing is just widening and widening every day. And so um, developers are, um, you know, coming to us, coming to HFCs, asking how can we fill that gap to get this project to actually pencil. Um, and so, you know, now nine in every 10 deals um, that HFCs participate in, especially um, low income housing tax credit deals, um, where the HFC is the bond issuer, um, as well as the general partner to receive that property tax exemption. Um, and so we have been talking with um, Tarrant County HFC, uh, having this ongoing discussion over the past couple of years. And most recently, I believe it was back in May, um, really made a breakthrough and um, the HFC is aware that this is a need and um, something that they would like to participate in. Um, and as Natalie said, it's really Really going to be on a case by case basis. There's no real bright line test of these are the fees that we're looking for. This is the, you know, this is the schedule and the time frame that we're looking at. Um, it's really going to be whatever that first deal is. Um, you know, we're going to be in constant contact with the developer, constant contact with Natalie and James, um, you know, really diving into the numbers, making sure that um, the HFC is protected um, and that the, you know, the revenues that they receive um, are, you know, beneficial for their involvement in the deal. Um, and I will say on, um, on these structures, any sort of bond deal or if it's a workforce deal, you know, financed conventionally with no bonds involved where the HFC could be the general partner to receive that property tax exemption, um, sort of the um, the the marching orders or the, the way the line that we would um, like for this to proceed with developers. Um, if there is a project out there first to be vetted by James and Natalie, just to see if this is a project in Tarrant County that they would want to be involved in. Um, and then if it is sort of just that initial Initial, you know, green light, then please reach out to us um, and we will sort of be the point of contact from there once um, passed off. Um, and again, Hilltop is along with myself and Tim Nelson and the rest of the group um, at Hilltop Securities. We are the financial advisors to the HFC. So any questions um, that you may have, um, you know, we sort of look at ourselves as an employee, a, a third arm to um, the HFC. So any questions that you have, do not hesitate. Please feel free to reach out to us. And again, we are in constant contact with Natalie and James and the rest of the HFC team. Um, and we're very excited um, for them sort of moving into this next um, this next step, this next phase, um, being a partner, being a general partner, being a bond issuer. Um, and we're seeing a lot of activity, a lot of developers already really reaching out to us and the HFC to be involved. So I think this next year will be really uh, crucial, and we are very excited to um, assist them in any way that we can. Thank you, Clara. And that's, yeah, of course. All right. Now, Megan South is with our Economic Development Office, and uh, welcome, Megan, and uh, you have the floor. Thank y'all for having me. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to switch gears just a tad, because although uh, we do work closely with um, all of the partners on the call here. Economic development is just a little bit different um, and, and has some different focuses. Um, so just a real quick overview. So the county has 41 cities uh, within it. 
the Economic Development Department of the Administrator's Office is responsible for coordinating and working with all of our cities within the county um, to make sure that we can support them um, to partner with them for tax incentives. Um, and so the two main ones that I'm going to talk about are just our TIFs or tax increment financing reinvestment zones. Um, they, they're interchangeable. Some people call them TIFs, some people call them TERS, and then um, tax abatement. So those are our two main tools that we utilize uh, when we're working with entities. We also have um, enterprise projects. We have um, Pace in a Box, which is a fairly new program um, that's very interesting. And then we also um, have historical site tax exemptions and a variety of other things that we use to support our cities. Um, so um, obviously I talked about TIFs. I know a lot of our partner cities have active TIFs with us currently. Um, it's a great tool for the community if you have an area that, um, you know, would otherwise probably be underutilized and um, you can work with us to, um, you know, get that area um, developed. We usually work closely with a developer of some sort or a consultant um, who brings these plans to us for each city. Tax abatements are a bit different um, in that essentially um, the city will approach us. Um, and, and let us know that they are interested in an abatement with a specific company that might be locating here. And um, we would then begin discussions with that company. So we have about 93 um, abatements that we've participated in since um, about 1990. Um, there's currently 22 that are active. And then I believe for TIFs that we have, let's see. 44. So most of our um, entities within the, the county are participating in some form of a TIF. Um, again, those are probably our most valuable tool when it comes to uh, working with our, our cities. We always try to make sure that we're good partners with the cities. Uh, we don't ever enter into any of these agreements without the city being comfortable with them, without making sure that we have their um, stamp of approval, essentially. Um, and really, that's that's really kind of just an overview. There's a whole lot more to economic development that we could go into, and I'd be more than happy to answer any other questions that you might have related to economic development. Before we move away from this, I do want to mention um, the Pace in a Box program. So for developers in particular um, that are looking at um, working on historical sites or um, older buildings, um, the county has a program called Pace, um, and it can give you some uh, tax credits essentially um, if you're looking to uh, revamp the facility and bring it up to um, speed and maybe potentially look at doing some um, energy um, cost saving measures. That's my overview, James. I know that that was short and sweet, but I will be more than happy to answer any questions if y'all have detailed questions. Well, good. That's great. Um, because we want to save as much time as we can for questions. It's, it's about them and the knowledge that that they're looking for. And so I don't see any questions in the chat. So um, those are the short presentations we wanted to give. And so if any of you have questions, let's uh, let's start working on those. I guess you guys did a great job. They didn't have any questions. So is that the only way you accept them is in the chat? No, nope, I will take your your voice. Ah. <laughs> morning, everyone. Good morning. Over here. OK, so um, let's see. I think it was. Um, is it Marguerite that you uh -huh. were talking about your 3.5 mil? Yes, ma'am. That's me. For your, for your single family homes. It's a mix, so it, it depends on the proposal. Um, so we'll take multifamily or single family. OK, so we, we mostly focus on single family affordable. Okay. So the, you said this applicate this RFP is already out. It is already out and I'll drop it again in the chat for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. So since I'm the only one asking. Okay. Uh, Pace in a box. <laughs> Can you elaborate a little bit more on Pace in a box? 
So uh, on our website, we do have the full a detailed version of information related to it, but it requires an application. We have um, sort of, I'll, I'll call it a project team that, that assists us with the Pace in a Box program. And so we essentially get an application for it. Um, and there's a variety of information that's required, but the Pace in a Box administrator reaches out to um, me or the county and essentially tells us that they have a potential project um, that one of our cities is looking into. They advise us on um, you know, whether or not this would be a good potential project for us to approve, and then we kind of move forward from there. But it's great if you're looking at, uh, let's say a hotel, for example. Um, if you're looking at redeveloping a uh, older hotel or a historical building that you maybe want to convert into a hotel. Um, a great example of that is the Sinclair, I believe, down here in downtown Fort Worth. Um, they use, they utilize PACE funding um, to redevelop that into a really nice hotel. Um, it, it basically is surrounding um, cost efficiencies, essentially. So energy efficiencies um, would be where you get your credits um, for uh, the remodel of the, the site. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, so one way uh, to get in touch with 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 our office, the community De development office, is go to the county's website, uh, go to departments, and look for community development, and that's where you will find ways to access us, ways to see what we have posted, because we will we'll post things, but then we'll have <clears throat> uh, some type of message on there to let you know that we have something posted out there. So if, uh, that's how you get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. When you reach out individual like you did this time, like the invitation, or is this something we need to go and do? Well, just if you need to find us, uh, okay. just go to the website. Yes. And I, I believe, Natalie, uh, how do they find you? Um, well, so I can give you guys my phone number and email address. My phone number is 817-884-1041. My email address is nmrose at tarrantcounty.com. And um, you can contact me. Um, you can go through James to, to get to me um, either way. Um, but you can contact me directly. But And then I will probably be um, working with James and, and Megan and Claire and, you know, our, our team here. Um, but, yes, you can reach me at those two, those two ways. Claire, what's a good way to get in touch with Hilltop? Hi, yes. Um, so my email address is um, Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E dot Merritt, M-E-R-R-I-T-T at HilltopSecurities.com. And my work phone number is 512-481-2044. Two zero four four, and again, if there is a project that comes along and um, a, a developer wants to, uh, you know, doesn't remember sort of the path that we would like to go through. Of course, you can always reach out to us. You can always reach out to James um, or Natalie. You know, we will be um, talking and in discussions, um, you know, together and working on this together. Um, and also, Maggie and Natalie and James put together on their website. I was just looking at it. Put together a great. Um, a sort of questions page um, that you can click on the link in the Tarrant County HFC website um, that just sort of is initially vetting developers, you know, sort of is there gap financing? What is the AMI restrictions? What is the, um, you know, what is the financing that you're looking for? Where can we contact you? Um, and so now that, you know, Tarrant County HFC is open for business. We believe the floodgates will be open. And so it will be helpful for people to use this link just so that we can easily you know, have all the information that we need um, to, you know, to quickly answer any questions if this is, if we think that this is a good deal to move forward or if this is not, uh, if Tarrant County HFC isn't the best partner for you to be working with. So it's beneficial for both the HFC and the developer just to have that initial vetting. Um, and Natalie or Maggie or James, um, is the uh, application for bonds, is that listed on your website? I can't remember if we had discussed that. I don't think the application is out there right now. 
Um, but we Got plan it. on, I think that we initially we wanted to do the question and answer, kind of get an idea of what um, the developers looking at, you know, um, kind of screen it and mm -hmm. let them know if, if that's something that they want to actually go through and, you know, because there is the application fee that's non-refundable. Right. So it, it, it's good to have, we think, discussions ahead of time, um, kind of vet some stuff out, see if it's going to be something that we're going to be able to do, and then start them on that process with the application, you know, the contacts they need to make, the things they need to have along with the application. So that Tarrant County HFC interest form is the first step. And then from there, then the application would follow. If I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Maggie, but I think that's what we decided to do. I think that's correct. Yeah. Megan, how do they find you if um, they're, they're looking at tax exemptions and all of that? Sure. You can just contact me directly. My direct phone number here at the county is 817-884-1522. And my email is M P as in Paul South S O U T H at Tarrant County TX dot gov. Thank you, Claire. There's a question um, mm -hmm. uh, about PFCs. What is the county's appetite for Class A mixed income private uh, public private partnership developments today? Yes, yeah, so I would say um, sort of as we had discussed in the beginning um, that Tarrant County HFC has not been involved in any um, partnership related deals or PFC or workforce housing structures where there are no bonds involved conventionally financed. Um, but I would I would say that if a deal comes along, uh, we will review that with the HFC and with the board if this is something that they would like to move forward with. Um, but again, in the past, um, they have sort of um, shied away from it, you know, but now they're um, definitely looking for that that good deal, that deal to come along. Um, so I do say that there is an appetite with the board that they are looking forward to seeing that deal come forward and sort of the I would say the time frame if we if we see a deal and we initially vet it and we we're having discussions with the developer, you know, we're making sure that the the rent levels, the, the AMI levels are, um, you know, appropriate and acceptable to the HFC. Sort of initially negotiating the terms, um, sort of the time frame on that is that the HFC holds, um, well, the Tarrant County Commissioners hold a board meeting once a, a, every Tuesday, just about. Um, but the HFC board would need a couple of weeks. No notice um, to actually plan that uh, board meeting. They are they meet on an ad hoc basis. Um, and so I believe the initial steps would be to bring to the board um, initial discussions about that project. And if this is something that the board would like to move forward with, um, then sort of we get into the nitty gritty of negotiating the actual deal terms in a memorandum of understanding and move forward th from there. So I think from probably initial inception that we know about the deal and everything looks great, probably a three three week turnaround um, and then maybe a three week turnaround after that for negotiating deal terms. I hope that answered your question. But again, this is um, this is the first time that the HFC is doing it and there is absolutely an appetite. Um, we have just not been uh, a, a deal has not been provided or approached to the HFC yet for us to really negotiate some and um, sort of iron out some of those um, um, hesitations, questions, uh, you know, at, at this point. But Absolutely, there is, and we are excited for whatever that deal is to come along. And, and, and I'm going to pop about, in and just go ahead. I'm just going to add a couple of things. So the HFC interest form is located online. So I did go ahead and drop that in the chat. So that is there. Um, and then I think I've answered most of the other questions. But if there's anything else, please just reiterate it in the chat, and we'll get to it. Sorry, James. Did you res you responded to the funding of soft loans? Oh no, I didn't do the soft loans okay. one. I don't think what? I don't think the HFC does, but I'll defer to Natalie on that. Natalie, you or Claire uh, know have 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 they talked about funding soft loans to fund gaps? No, we have no. not. Um, they have not talked about that. So so that's not a no. We don't do it. It's just something we haven't looked at yet. Is that is right? Can I interpret that? Okay. Right. Yes, I, I would say that that's one of those things that they would have to look at on an on a any on a case by case basis and and the board would have to then determine if that's something that they were interested in doing what's the risk what's the benefit you know out you know weigh those things out and working closely with hilltop and our other partners so 
Okay. And the case the case by case basis part is is really essential. So, you know, Megan talked earlier about how we have 41 different cities in Tarrant County and they all have different needs and different populations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, they're located different ways of transit and workforce and all of the things. And so um, that's also something to be keeping in mind for each of these cases where mm -hmm. making sure that you're using the most appropriate tools. So where a PFC might work great in one spot um, or you might use project based vouchers in another spot is like, is that the right? tool for those cases or where would you rather mm -hmm. look at a 4% deal or use home funds or something else and so mm -hmm. just to kind of be thinking about that with each of the deals um, because that we do try and be flexible in that space as much as possible. Right and just kind of building on what Maggie said to some of the requirements with the application is that you you have to talk to the city you have to contact the school districts you do have to talk to the commissioner um, for that that if that whatever precinct that that um, project is going to be in, if the city or the school district object, then we're not going to do it. The city has to buy in, the school district has to buy in, you know, um, and and you know we're going to check that. So if you don't have that, then um, and you don't have that support, because like I said, each community community is different. Some have more. Um, some have more need, some don't want more low income in their area because they've got too much. Some of the schools, um, they can't handle the capacity. They, you know, they're they're full already. So those are some very important things to keep in mind um, when you are starting to come to us and talking about a deal. And Natalie, just to jump in there for the developer's sake, um, and I feel like we we get asked this question a lot on. Um, you know, have you all talked to the school district? Have you talked to the city? Have you talked to the commissioner whose precinct mm -hmm. this um, property is located in? Would you all prefer to have um, those answers in writing the correspondence with the school district in a certain format or just to let the um, the county commissioners know and the board members know? Yes, we've had these conversations and this was the outcome or what is sort of your format that you would like that uh, correspondence to be had? They really would like to have if they if they just say, no, we don't care, just a letter of no objection, um, mm -hmm. just something we would really prefer to have something in writing um, that we can fall back on. And that I mean, most of the time that's um, that's fairly easy to get. I understand some school districts, the larger school districts are a little harder to get that information from. But um, then if you have a problem getting that, then um, we can maybe help with that part of it. But um, for the most part, yes, we would like to have something in writing, just something short, sweet, nothing real, you know, long, but just so that we know that they um, that they did contact someone and that they don't have any objection. Maggie, can you talk a, 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 a little bit uh, loud about um, this layering issue, the subsidy layering, sure. um, so everyone can hear, hear that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so some of this is covered and this is mainly thinking about it for homes. So we want to make sure that we're not over subsidizing any particular development. Um, and then home does have some specific um, rules and regulations around what type of um, funding can be used in a particular unit. So because home is by unit, so that's the way that we think about it. So we will have home units and then home un or units that are not um, home. And in the RFP, you will see a breakdown of what that looks like for home caps, um, depending on bedroom size and then what year of the funding um, that we're using. So because this RFP currently has multiple years of funding, we have to use the subsidy limits um, per those different years. And so um, I think it's one of the last um, pages in that RFP. We break that down for you. The other thing that's important to know is that we um, you are not able per HUD federal regulation able to use a project based voucher in a home in a home unit. Um, and so it's just important that you keep that in mind. You can still um, have somebody with a, a housing choice voucher come in and you and rent that home unit, but you cannot layer it with a PPV. Uh, what about? There was a question about a uh, percentage of units in multifamily development that need that need to be affordable to apply for the 3.5 million RFP. Did you, you I did. Yeah, so I answered that. So it's by unit in this case. So the way that uh, when we're looking at home, it's by unit. Now, if you did it by, you know, a tax credit, then that would be different. And you would need to make sure that you're abiding by those rules as well. And and that's for units with uh, at or below 60% AMI. 
Right, so with home, 90% of the units that are considered home units need to be at or below 60% AMI, and then the others would need to be affordable. So that's typically up to 80%. The other thing that's important to keep in mind, though, is of the home units, you need to have, um, if there's more than five units, you would have 20% of those home units at low home, which would be under 50% AMI. Blair, there's a question about uh, please provide a brief explanation on the benefits and structure of a TIF. I probably wouldn't be the best to answer a TIF. That'd question. probably be Megan. Okay, That'd Megan. be Megan, probably. Um, when you say benefits and structure, um, so typically um, the city. Let's just let's just do an example here. So the city. Um, would hire um, a consultant typically. Um, we've worked with David Pettit in the past, um, P3. I mean, there's there's numerous consultants that we have worked with, but when someone or a city really wants a TIF, generally they'll set up a meeting with um, the county, uh, me and the consultant. The consultant generally is responsible for creating the boundaries or the zones of the TIF. Uh, working with the city to determine which areas within their um, community that could be best utilized for a TIF. Um, really, it's on the consultant's shoulders to provide the county and the city with the documentation related to the supporting documentation related to the structure of the TIF. Um, this includes um, a percentage um, that the, the county would be participating in. So let's say that the ask from the consultant is that the county participates at 50% for 30 years. The benefit to that is that the zone um, would generate the increment from the increase in the, the revenues and that the tax revenues within that zone. And those revenues would go towards development within that zone, specific zone in the community. So like I had mentioned earlier, if it's if it's an area that would probably otherwise be underutilized for whatever reason that maybe needs some help, um, like a leg up. Um, this would be the perfect opportunity to create um, a TIF zone within that area and then have it generate um, tax increment over the life of the zone, which is typically 30 um, ish years. Um, and put that extra money towards developing that area. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, please put it in the chat again. I'll I'll, I'll try to do a better explanation. <laughs> All right. I don't see any more questions. If anyone has a question, just uh, unmute mute yourself and jump right in. Just a thank you from uh, TOJ. Just thank you so much. And I will be reaching out to everyone, you know, for additional questions as they arise. So thank you so much. So this has been recorded. I, I believe we're, we're going to try to put the recording on, uh, on our website. So those who missed it can go back and for those who attended can go back and review. And uh, we're, going, we're going to try to do this uh, once a year uh, because things change. And that way we can uh, talk about new tools for your tool chest. And, and you may have different questions. And there's always uh, innovative new ideas and what, what ways of trying to develop in communities. Uh, uh, things are happening fast in Tarrant County. So um, we're all trying to keep up with what's going on out there and uh, make sure that uh, when you come here, things are things run smoothly for you. So thank you, speakers, for your for your time. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and um, we're going to go ahead and conclude. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank y'all.